Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football. Obviously, just a super disappointing loss for Lane Kiffin, this Ole Miss program at home against Kentucky. Heading into this football game, 17 and a half point favorites, losing outright. This is where the national media is surely going to pile on. Like, anytime the national media gets a chance to pile on to Lane Kiffin, they certainly are going to. And in some aspects, Lane Kiffin deserves to get a lot of the blame. Like this Ole Miss team didn't look ready to play. I thought the offensive play calling and game script was very confusing from what I think is one of the smartest and brightest offensive minds we see in our sport. That being said, this Ole Miss team is still a college football playoff caliber roster. Now, did they play that way Saturday as a team? No, absolutely not. But you look at the roster and say, this is a team that one has a ton of opportunity ahead of them to show why they are a college football playoff team. Want to get into two different conversations. One, and probably the main part of this conversation, what needs to be cleaned up for Ole Miss going forward. But I do want to talk about just a few positive takeaways, specifically on the defensive side of the football. Now, before we get into it, as always, Look, to the Ole Miss fans, y'all been rocking with the fellas going way back to the winter months, talking this team in the transfer portal. And yes, no secret, this was a team I was extremely high on heading into 2024. And to be quite frank, I'm still high on this Ole Miss team if they show that they figured it out going on the road to play South Carolina. Would love to hear from you guys in the comment section. I get there. I wouldn't even say mixed emotions. I think there's just a lot of anger and frustration with what we just saw from this Ole Miss team. Let it fly in the comment section. Appreciate you guys rocking with it. If y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. Let's get into this one. You look at the overall game. I mean, Kentucky had four and a half yards per play, Ole Miss 6.3 yards per play. You normally don't see teams lose football games when they're averaging a full two yards more per play than the opposing team. What is the, uh, broadly speaking, what went wrong for Ole Miss? The brutal on third downs. Now, Lane Kiffin got up there in the press conference and talked about the lack of execution on third downs. I would argue the bigger problem was the execution on first and second down. I mean, Ole Miss continued to find themselves in these third and long situations, and that's not a good recipe in terms of staying on the football field and moving the football. And you look at this Ole Miss offense, it's very reliant on getting that first down so they can run with that pace and tempo they like to run. Just a lot of three and outs. Never really seemed to get an opportunity to find the rhythm on the offense. We all know this Ole Miss offense is predicated on rhythm. And they just never seem to find it after that first drive in that football game. Now, specifically, what were the main problems we saw with this Ole Miss offense? I think you got to start with the uh, I don't necessarily know if Lane Kiffin went into this football game saying, all right, it's going to be the Trey Harris show. That is not going to win you many football games in the SEC. Now, let's be frank about it. Like, Trey Harris is one of the best wide receivers, not only in the SEC, but argu not even arguably. He's, he's one of the best players in the country at the wide receiver position. I got no problem at all having Trey Harris be the center part within this Ole Miss offense, but there's a difference between having him be a central piece and being wildly over-reliant on Trey Harris. Ole Miss was wildly, wildly over-reliant on him in that football game. You take a look at the target distribution, over half of Jackson Dart's attempts went to Trey Harris. Jackson Dart only threw 27 passes in this game. 15 of those passes went to Trey Harris. Trey Harris had a field day, catching 11 of them for a buck 76 and a touchdown. That being said, why did you go out and get Juice Wells? Why did you retain Jordan Watkins? Caden Priest going at the tight end position. There, what was the reason we were so high in this Ole Miss team heading into 2024 was how multidimensional this offense can be. It was about the opposite of multidimensional. It was one-dimensional. Good football going to Trey Harris. And so that was the most frustrating part because you start looking at the target distributions and say, all right, Trey Harris got 15 out of 27 targets. The next most targeted pass catcher was running back Henry Parrish with five targets. Juice Wells had two targets, zero catches. Jordan Watkins, one target, zero catches. Some of the best weapons on this Ole Miss team were not even allowed to have an impact on this football game. That's a problem. You look at Juice Wells, he is, I think, clearly a top 10 wide receiver in this conference. He's got to get more opportunity to have an impact on this football game. I think that's the glaring problem we saw with Ole Miss on offense. Now, secondly, 
running the football. Like Kentucky and Mark Stoops, you kind of knew what they were going to do heading into this one. They were going to make Jackson Dart be patient, try to get Jackson Dart to force some issues. And Lane Kiffin said in his press conference, Jackson Dart did a good job not forcing the ball into traffic. They were light boxing Ole Miss all day. And the four or five man boxes and Ole Miss just refused to run the football. You saw when they got out into the second half and started to run the football with Henry Parrish, they started to have a little bit of success moving the football. Part of the reason we're so bad on third downs in this football game was we're looking at third and longs consistently on these drives. What's the best way to stay on schedule? Running the football. You had the opportunity. You had a light box. You had success when you went to running the football, but for some reason, even being ahead of this football game in the second half, Ole Miss just didn't want to seem to lean on the run game. That just made me scratch my head because, again, Kentucky was giving you those looks. Kentucky's good against the run, but they were pretty clearly saying, hey, we want you to run the football. We're daring you to run the football. And for some reason, Lane Kiffin, this Ole Miss offense, didn't want to do it. I think, secondly, where's the depth in the running back room? This was something that we were very excited about heading into 2024. Yeah, Henry Parrish has been the best back on this football team. I got no problem with him shouldering the workload, but you kind of sprinkle in Matt Jones. You don't see Ulysses Bentley. You don't bring in Amos. You bring in Amos through the transfer portal, what, to to just not play football. I don't, I don't get some of the transfer portal additions that they made if they're not going to go out and use some of these guys. And I think Ulysses Bentley is a phenomenal running back. We saw that all of last year, and for him to not get a single opportunity – to show what he can do makes me scratch my head, especially because Henry Paris was running the football. Well, he averaged almost five yards per carry. That being said, like he was clearly banged up. He was on the ground multiple times in this football game. Why not use some fresh legs, especially in the second half? Didn't make much sense to me. I think lastly, offensive line and pass protection really struggling on the inside. Look, Deion Walker, that's about as good of a defensive lineman on the inside that you'll see all game or all season. I should say, it was a problem, and at times Kentucky was only bringing three, dropping eight, and Jackson Dart had muddy pockets to work with. And there were consistent times where Jackson Dart's out there running for his life when Kentucky's dropping eight in the coverage. You got to be able to hold up in pass protection when they're bringing only three pass rushers. Ole Miss struggled to do that. I think partially it's Jackson Dart just getting a little skittish in the pocket. I don't think he managed the pocket all that well in this football game. That being said, the offensive line, particularly on the inside, certainly left a lot to be desired. Now, the positives. Like, if you were to take away a positive from this football game, it would be the front seven on the defense. I thought it was phenomenal. I mean, you look at the numbers, five sacks, 10 tackles for a loss. Brock Vandergriff, very limited pockets to throw the football to. You look at the success Brock Vandergriff had, it was when they were just running that go route to Barry and Brown, throwing one up, hoping for a prayer. And Barry and Brown makes a good play. I thought the front seven looked really good. In fact, I think it looks like one of the better units that we see in the SEC, and that that matters. Like, What's been the biggest difference between Ole Miss and some of the top contenders in this SEC conference? It's been front seven. I think this looks like an elite SEC front seven. I think that's a positive takeaway you can have. I think there's better plan on how we're going to use Suntarian Perkins. Walter Nolan looks great. Prince Lee U looks great. Jared Ivey. Might have been the most disruptive front seven defender for this Ole Miss team. J.J. Peck, I mean, it, you're seeing guys step up in the front seven. I, I thought Ole Miss really boxed Kentucky in the trenches on the defensive side of the football. And you look at the secondary, little handsy, some untimely penalties, some untimely poor ball skills when the football was in the air. I think there are some steps that this secondary can make. But at the end of the day, Kentucky's got some difference makers on the defensive side of the football. But this, this Ole Miss defense – was not the reason that almost lost this football game. I mean, Kentucky scored 20 points. They averaged four and a half yards per play. They were on the field for 40 minutes of this football game, and Ole Miss's defense only gave them 20 points. I look at this game and say it, it's on the offense. Now, again, the, the positive you can take away is the Ole Miss defense looks legit. It looks like a, a defense that can win an SEC title and be very competitive in the SEC. That's not something we're used to saying about this Ole Miss defense. Now, you look at the offense. If you would have told me Kentucky scored 20 points in this football game, I would have told you Ole Miss covered the spread. Ole Miss only scored 17. Look, on paper, this is an Ole Miss offense that can consistently 
score 40 plus points. We all know that it's just got to be better. I think Lane Kiffin has to be a better scripter of plays coming in with just a little bit more of a game plan. And more importantly, being able to adjust on the fly. And I'll say this, I trust Lane Kiffin to do it. Like he's one of the best in the business at running an offense at making in-game adjustments. We've seen it time and time again. He just didn't do a very good job of this. And then obviously Jackson Dart didn't play his best football game. The rest of the Ole Miss offense definitely struggled to find a rhythm. <clears throat> My biggest concern is Kentucky might've showed the blueprint of how to give this Ole Miss offense some problems. And that is light box him beg Ole Miss to run the football and drop seven, eight in coverage and don't give up the explosive play. Now Ole Miss was able to find some explosive plays, but not as many as they're used to finding. And it seemed like Ole Miss was not comfortable working the football methodically down the field. It almost felt like Lane Kiffin felt like he was playing the FCS opponents that they started off the season with. And yeah, I include Wake Forest as an FCS program, a Wake Forest alum, Wake Forest ain't a power four program right now it seemed like Ole Miss was treating Kentucky like one of those programs that, hey, we're just going to put up some numbers. We're going to push the ball down the field and score. Well, that, that's not how it works in the SEC. There are going to be times where you have to methodically move the football down the field, which includes running the football effectively. Ole Miss ran the football effectively, just didn't seem to want to stick to the run game. We'll see how Ole Miss adjusts. I would guess that South Carolina gives Ole Miss very similar looks to what Kentucky just give. I mean, I think Kentucky showed a blueprint of how to make Ole Miss's offense struggle and how to frustrate this offense. I'm looking forward to seeing how this Ole Miss team responds because, again, I look on paper and say this is this is a college football playoff team. My, my opinion on this team in terms of the talent on this roster did not change. Now it needs to come together, start playing some better football. You got your ugly, sloppy, win, sloppy loss, I should say, out of the way. Look, this was a bad game regardless of the outcome, regardless of if Kentucky didn't hit that go ball on that fourth and seven. Lane Kiffin was going to be pissed either way. Now, you obviously, ideally, like to win football games and have a lot to learn from. You lost this one, still have a lot to learn from, still have everything to play for and plenty of opportunities to still achieve the goals that this Ole Miss team had four or five weeks ago. Got to clean up some of the stuff we just talked about. That was my takes on it. Again, I would love to hear from the Ole Miss fans in the comment section or just college football fans in general. Like, I, It's concerning what we saw, but I'm not ready to say this Ole Miss team is not a legitimate college football playoff contender because they still are certainly on paper. Those are my takes. Appreciate you guys rocking with it. If y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. Appreciate you guys. We'll talk to y'all later.